Welcome to Advanced JavaScript Study Hall Edition. All right, so uh, ask me some questions. What do you guys want to talk about? Let's make a list. I mean, I'm I'm struggling with hooks, but that's a, that's maybe a bit advanced. That's that's also React specific. So All right, we got hooks on the list. What else? What are you curious about? What are you struggling with? What do you want to go deeper on? One thing I'm curious about was actually a map. Uh, John showed me about a month ago uh, a cool thing that you can do with map um, where somewhere inside of map it holds onto the index. And you can mm -hmm. use that to do cool tricks with it, but I, I don't exactly like I know it exists. I don't know how to do it. All right. It's actually pretty easy. Let's talk about that. <clears throat> uh, let's see, let's do uh, So um, if you're using array prototype map, easy. So you guys have seen these like this. Let's see, return number times two. Okay, so we could do something like that. Um, and doubles our numbers. Cool. You can also optionally add a second argument to that. Keep track of the index. Now, if I do that same thing, they'll give you all the indexes that you can do whatever you need to with also. Um, one more thing that you can do, there's actually yet another argument you can give that, which is a reference to the original array. Like so. Pretty cool. What else? I'm personally just so fresh on JavaScript. I don't have anything to specifically ask for. I'm just, I, I, I'm interested in what we're learning. Um, so I, I just don't have any requests specifically. I guess if I was going to throw something in, I would throw in like array manipulation that like would like the different um, techniques for changing an array without manipulating it, so to speak. Yeah. All right. Let's do some. Array manipulation or munging, that's called, or data wrangling, that's also called. This is, this is probably like one of my strongest areas as a developer. I'd recommend that you get super good at it also because this is bread and butter work. 
Like this is what you spend like 80% of your time as a programmer doing is some kind of like data munching stuff. Love to hear that because that was literally a thought I had this morning was like, man, that's going to be very regular and I need to get yep. better at that. True story. Um, all right, let me pull an example from a talk I gave on this very topic once upon a time. TED Talk hands, Kyle. Hell yeah. Um, let's see. Let's go to the repo. Um, perfect. So let's, uh, let's do some tests on this also. So I was just uh, working on this with the instructors the other day. Here's how you add tests to a JavaScript project. It only works with Node. It won't work with your uh, browser apps, but um, you can make a new package JSON file, and then you can npm install jest. There's a whole bunch of testing tools out there. Jest is probably the best one to learn right now because it's it's a mashup of it's it's like having a really good like a well configured testing environment just kind of out of the box. It's like having Mocha and Chai and Sign On and a bunch of plugins and all that stuff kind of configured for you. Um, all right, then we make a tests folder. We make a file in there that we'll call data transformation.spec.js. And then I'm going to say that my test command is just. I'm also going to add one for watching for changes, like so. All right, so if I throw this test in here, I should be able to npm test watch, npm run test watch, and see a failing test. Excellent. So here's what we're looking at. We have this data. It's an object with two keys users and availabilities. Uh, uh, users are doing something where it's like, um, this is the ID of the user. And then that's like user details. This is an array of objects. Um, this is actually taken from like an actual app that I worked on. It has a date, start time, a duration, and like who the user is. All right, so that's what we start with. We need to turn it into that, where it's got one key uh, that's set to an array of objects. We pull the ID out of it. Uh, we make the days keyed off of that. So it's all the same data. We haven't added any new stuff, but it's organized wildly differently. That's like, that's a pretty regular data transformation kind of task. Questions about that? Would, would this be part of, um, so whenever I was kind of looking at like a database manipulation um, and like cleaning data, I, I kept, uh, I, you know, you see ETL and I know that ETL is part of the process, but like I haven't, it, would this be part of like an ETL process or is that what you said? The, yeah, sorry. Yeah, T. Okay, cool. The um, great, great. That was uh, something I was running into um, a while back. So yeah, you might extract this and then turn T it into this, and then take the result and L it into something else. Other questions about this concept.
Cool. Let's do some beta transformations. So, all right, we got to figure out a place to start with this. Any ideas? How to start attacking this problem? muted sorry um i would think to do it by the highest level we're trying to go for so and I, I i don't know if this is the right approach but i would i would want to try and pull out the users to be there to be the top level object yeah it's not so bad right. I like that so part of the tdd process is like all right that's how i know i'm done but for right now we can skip that make a smaller problem. So we could say something like, all right, um, I want that to be like the top level thing. Right now, it's an object. It ultimately needs to be an array of objects. Okay, okay. So let's see if we can write a function that, um, that just does that. So uh, we got to figure out what we call it. So maybe we call that something like, well, actually, let's do it, let's do it this way. She's going to stay with this test and try to get something coming back from it. So it says transform is not defined. Well, I haven't brought it in. So I say, all right, well, this transform function comes from uh, the app. Cool. And it says there is no app. Right you are thing. So I can make an app file. It goes, okay, cool. It's not a function. See how test driven development just sort of leads you. It, it's like giving you instructions on what to do. Uh, all right, so I make a function called transform. And export it. Cool. Now it's just saying it's undefined. So maybe I do something like that. What if I just return that? Hey, now we're getting to like diffs. This is going to help guide us along uh, as we're doing this. Is that module exports? Do you, is that required in JavaScript in order to pull the file into another, uh, in, into a test suite or just into any yes. other file? Uh, that is required to do that. It, it's from Node. Um, it's the same kind of idea as um, if I did export uh, transform. That would be like the same thing in import export syntax. If you okay. Export default transform, and then over here, like an import uh, transform from. Got it. App. Same kind of idea. It predates it a little bit and it's dynamic, which is fucking awesome because you can do things like require stuff in loops. Um, it also is um, uh, prevents static analysis. Like, so that's why he's, it's, it's kind of dying. Uh, import exports becoming more popular. And it's in node now behind a bunch of flags. Uh, okay, so, all right, now this is telling us exactly what's going wrong here. So, all right, I want users, users is currently this object and I want it to be an array. So maybe that's like old data dot users, shit, what if I just make it an array? Okay. 
So I really need to transform those users I have now, which are like in this key value thing, I need to make those an array. So I could probably do something like old data dot users um, dot values, maybe. Let's see what that does. Oops, says it's undefined. Well, I don't like that at all. Um, maybe it needs object.values. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Users is finally an array. Um, okay. So I sort of want to see, let's take a look at just the data all together. Okay. That's progress, man. What's it missing? Their user IDs? Their IDs. Okay, so this is where it starts getting tricky. Because those IDs were the keys of that. Hey. So, huh. I can probably get all of those keys. Like if I said user IDs as uh, object.keys, old data dot users. Like that. Let's see what that looks like. All right, let's see. It's user IDs. Hey now. Zero and one. Is that what it was? That keys. No, it was uh, one and two. It looks like it's giving you the index. Yeah, it does kind of look like that, huh? Um, let's take a look at the docs for object.keys. Well, that looks about right to me. All data.users, that should be user IDs. Hmm. Yeah, those do look a lot like indices. So if I was pulling those out of old data.users, ah, ah, anybody see it? What happened? I mean, I can tell it, it made its, that each of them is in their own array. So I'm logging old data.users and the user IDs. So this is old data.users. What's wrong? Are they in the wrong order? Nope, not quite. Wait, I don't remember what their IDs were. Is it getting the user IDs from the the newly transformed, uh, and because they don't have IDs, it's just using yeah. an index? Uh, because arrays are objects. And so the indexes of these would be, like that's, oh, that's really all an array is, is an object where the keys are numbers. Is that kind of like the prototyping thing that we were working on the other day? Correct. So yeah, I already did the transformation. And so the IDs don't exist anymore. So instead. Um, what would happen if we, uh, if we switch the, um, like, like we initialized um, the retrieval of, yeah, there you go. Never mind. we just did that. Oop. All right, catching up. <laughs> I know there's a key command to do that, just like switch a line or move one up a line. And do you know, does anyone know the VS code key command for that? 
It's option shift and then up or down. Oh no, that's copy. It's uh, I think it's just option command up or down. Move the line up and down. Yeah. Just option and then the direction. There you go. Yeah, option shift is copy the line. Excellent. Um, all right. So you should have pulled it out of there. I kind of want to see what it looks like right here now. Hey, there we go. Hey, look, I got my one and my two. All right, cool. So if I look at old data dot users, very nice. One and two. So um, any ideas for how I get those those numbers in there? Can you set the keys of the new object using that array? Yeah. How? I don't know. Like I don't know if this is the right answer, but in, you can index it because it's the second or the you know the first index of the actual array, the full array, and then there's each an index there. Totally cool. I feel like we learned something. Oh, I don't know, twenty minutes ago that might help us with that. dot map yeah what would i do so i think you want to map over the uh old data dot users uh -huh. okay what, what happens in here so each of the users, uh, let's see. You want to, so you want you you want to pull in the user IDs and make that the. I guess you could keep the user ID as as the key name for it. Can uh, will will JavaScript just can you just uh, do the user IDs and then put the, the the bracket deal on it and will it just automatically understand what you're trying to do? Or not that not the. So I, I know if you if you name the key and the value the same thing, okay. But the the, the value is going to be a number. Never mind. Um. Something that we just did. Like well, index is the second argument. argument, right? Yeah, we could do a second argument for this. What's the second argument? I mean, so wouldn't they, they would still be their index? So I don't see how that would. Mm -hmm. mm, Unless sorry. you're calling the the users the user ID array using that index and then assigning that to the object, maybe something like that. Because whatever this was, so if I turn the user there, so Amelia Bedelia's user ID is one. Bob Barker's user ID is two. They're in the same positions in these arrays. So would it be like the array and then, oh, well, never mind. Because I would just think you would do the original array and then bracket notation it and then do an assignment like that. But I, I don't, I guess I, I don't really fully understand the JavaScript um, notation. I probably do something like that. I need to add an ID field to this. So that means that. What should that user ID be set to? User ID at uh, index. Yeah, because it's at the same position in the array. Then it'll be zero and zero, and then one, and then one. Yep. Holy shit. OK, so if I do that, get rid of these console logs. Um, Kind of starting to get in the ballpark here. So 
It all it also needs to have uh, a days object. So we could say like user dot days equals maybe an empty object there. Hey, those gray things, those are things that are matching. That means it's working. <laughs> so we're getting somewhere. Um, cool. Maybe the single biggest thing that I see students fuck up uh, when they're writing code is they make some progress like this, and then they just keep going. <laughs> Stop. This code looks like shit. Um, let's get this cleaned up a little bit first. So some things that we could do to make this better. What do you think? Could you put it all inside that map? Did you? Like you could. Here's the problem. If I if I do like this object.keys, I really only need to do that once. If I put that inside here, now it's going to recalculate that every single time. Oh, yeah. That's kind of efficient. I'll give you an idea. First thing, uh, when you're looking at something like this and you have these inline functions, I pretty much never keep the inline functions make some other function. I don't even know what it would be called yet. But it takes in a user and an index and then does all of these things. And so there's, there's a problem with this. We'll get to it in a sec. But okay, now this is starting to flatten out a little bit and get a little bit easier to read. And now I need to figure out a better name for this. Like, what is this actually doing? It, it gives the, the user their ID number back. It gives yeah. the user. Um, so we could say like, add ID um, and days to user. That's it's a mouthful, but it's getting more accurate. So, um, well, pro tip. If you, go ahead. I was going to say, what if you make it, you can make a, a variable for users and then chain that map off of it instead of, and you can clean up lines one and four there. Uh, now, yeah, say that again. You can make a, so, you can make a constant for the old data dot users, and then you could just change. Uh, actually, you could actually just change chain that map off of line three, right? Uh, yeah, totally could. Let's see. Um, dot users dot map. I don't know if that actually makes it better, but it's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's pause on that for a sec. I, I like it, but. Uh, why, why, did you, why would you have to call users again? If, if, old, if old data dot users is set equal to object dot uh, values. I think you're right. You can just take that dot map. Right. And you could actually just put it, you can keep it on that line that it's on, just erase everything in front of it, right? Like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't hate that. All right, so um, here's a hint that this function is doing too much. If you're describing what a function does and you have to use the word and, that's too much. So we could do something like this instead. And say like add empty days to user. Now it's like a lot more specific too. And then just map again. And 
be something like that. Yeah. Now we're starting to get this like separate composed cool shit going on. All right, so we're gonna have a problem though. The problem's on line 11. Anybody spot what it is? The arguments aren't being passed through. Yeah, which one in particular? Uh, index. Uh -oh. Index is right there. User IDs. User IDs is not in scope. That's there. That's there. Those two things can't see each other. That's a problem. There's no good reason any of you should know this yet, but I'm kind of curious if you can logic your way through it. How are we going to solve this problem? I can't move this out here because it needs old data. Now I have the exact same problem, but that would put it in scope. The you, solution uh, is, go ahead. Could you turn that uh, into a function? Uh, yes, you're on the right track, keep going. And then pass the function as part of the argument. So it gets called every time, but it, 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 uh, oh. it, uh, you need to use it. But how do I, you're on the right track, but if I do that, add ID. if I do that, dot map is looking for a function definition. This is a function definition. If I invoke it, I'm getting its return value. Because yeah, I could do something like user IDs Hmm, that doesn't really work though. Because now user IDs is just going into this user position and I'm ending up with the return value of the function. That's not what I want at all. So when that evaluates, this gets undefined or whatever the fuck instead of a function definition. Can, can you make the function just set the uh, just set the index ID and then instead of having a called user, you call it on the user ID uh, up above it. Does that make sense? Like, so it sounds like what you're talking about is a mutation. Uh, we don't want to do mutations. Okay. There's a way to do this with, with pure functions. I'll give you another hint. But Line five is just fine. That is, that is actually what it will end up being. But map still needs a function definition. And when I invoke at, uh, add ID to user, I'm going to get its return value. And the, the purpose of the user IDs is just to make that that change right there. So do, right. do we need the user IDs after we return user? No. So we only need to just get the user IDs to pass into into our function. Correct. Okay. So do we you just can pass in old data dot users or something too, but now we have the exact same problem. How do I pass another variable into that? Can you set the, oh, never mind. This is hard. This might be the single like most intellectually brain fucky thing we do in the entire program. Well, what if you set the, what if you set user ID equal to user dot ID outside of that and then assign the value in the add ID to user function? Ah, uh, but now if we do that, now this function doesn't stand alone. Now it's not a pure function. It's relying on this outside scope. So what, what, what I'm talking about, and I, I don't know if this is sort of the same thing you're just trying to do, but so turning line two into its own function mm -hmm. and, then, and then passing that function in as an argument. Okay. But 
this is the problem. How do I pass something in? The result of invoking this mm -hmm. needs to be a function definition. Right now it's user. It needs to be a function definition that takes in these two arguments, no less. How the fuck am I gonna do that? Um, this is a very wild thought. It, it's probably whatever, but um, I maybe don't return user. Oh, Roz is on the right track. What would I return instead? Um, you would want to return a user index or a user ID. You don't want the actual user. Oh, that's not quite because okay. that, uh, this is the transforming function. The thing that returns back from this needs to be whatever you want the new user to be. But Roz got us one step closer. It has to do with what we return. The result of calling add ID to user and invoking it, that result needs to be a function definition. And that function definition needs to be something that returns user. Correct. Okay. It takes in user and indexes arguments and returns a transformed user. Okay. Um, what if we get, uh, what if we create a user function and uh, we bring in both the add to user Mm -hmm. and the uh, add empty days inside of it. So it, it doesn't have anything to do with this one. Okay. And that line is correct. Can we create a function called transferred user or transformed user? We could, that's not quite it. The big Wait. thing is that line right there. It's something goofy we're gonna do with line 12. Yeah, could we turn that into a function? Uh, expand. Line 12. Yeah. We have, we have return mm -hmm. on a function that is return user. So like that? Uh, it'd be, have to be declared outside of it. No, but that's Would the it? idea. So all right, uh, enough torture. I'll just tell you. Um, no, that's exactly what it is. We return a function out of this that takes in a user and an index and does this shit and then ends up returning user. And then this ends up taking, uh, what do we have there? The user IDs. I just heard a bunch of brain goo get on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was all me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so let's walk through this slow. Map needs to be given a function definition. It's going to get this function definition. That is returned when you invoke this function, which is what we did here. And we passed in uh, a variable. And so now user IDs is in scope. Holy shit. Just stare at that for a while. It's a hell of a trick. We returned a function from a function. So is it taking the user IDs that are going in at line five and yes. using that as the first argument for line 11? Uh, no, it's not using it as an argument at all. It's just putting it in scope so that when I'm using this here, it can look up the scope and see that that exists there. Okay. I got, I think I'm, I'm still having the most trouble, I think, with the, just the syntax overall. I, I'm just not used to it.
So that is, it's cool though. Other ways we could write this exact same thing. This is the this is the functional way to do it. That's the same thing. It's a function that returns a function. Does it, and it still recognizes the the second set of arguments as map, like as a as a map argument, where yeah. Like, so it's the thing that gets returned when you invoke add ID. To oh use. shit! Okay, so okay, so because it's the latter, because that's the function that's getting. Oh, holy shit! Okay, cool. I get it. That's yeah. all right. That's fucking crazy, huh? Wow, that's weird. So, um. You see stuff like that in functional programming all the time. And if you did a lot of math classes in high school, that should look kind of familiar. We don't like, there's not a ton of direct correlations with math stuff in a lot of the work that we do. This is an exception to this. Does anybody recognize what this is for math? Calculus in particular? The transitive property? Oh, no. Uh, not quite. Calculus. This is yeah, a slice and a loaf of bread, right? This is f of g of x. Yes, it is. So some vocab on this. User and index are parameters of this inner function. This is a parameter of this function. We're accessing this parameter because it was passed in to us. We're accessing this parameter because it was passed into us. We're accessing this through closure. This scope and this scope are two different things. One's inside the other. When an inner scope is referencing something from an outer scope, we say that it's accessing it through closure. Could you repeat that? Uh, I'll, I'll do it three times. Like I said, this is the most brain fucky thing in the entire program. When an inner scope is referencing something from an outer scope, we say that it's accessing it through closure. There's two scopes here, this inner one and this outer one. When the inner scope references something from an outer scope, we say that it's accessing it through closure. It has closed over the outer variable. This is this is one thing I was, I was trying to get better articulating the other day. Of and and so one thing I I I think Ahmed said or uh, Damon said was mm -hmm. so just in the way it works is it's is it that the add id to user is ran first and then mm -hmm. it's sort of like dead yes and yes that, and then because it's already run but it just sort of like leaves behind this extra information yes the the inner function can just whoop, pull out you got it alan that's it when i invoke this function here it runs it says okay i passed in these ids I'm going to return this function definition and then it stops. The cool thing about this is even though that outer function ran, it's over, finito, done. This function that it returned back, it's still a function definition. It hasn't been invoked yet. 
but it remembers that this used to be in its environment. It has closed over it. Is user IDs an array? Uh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> it's another metaphor. Let me find. I need. Um, I need props for this. Give me just a sec. Getting props. Yes. Yeah. Don't care. Top on us. I think maybe Russian nesting dolls would be a good uh, a good type of prop, but. I like start to understand it and then I like think about it more and I'm like, wait, no. <laughs> Maybe he's going to take juggle. a sec. It's not going to click right away. All right. So this is my backpack. So here's my backpack. Inside of my backpack, I'm going to put this folder. Okay, so folder is in the backpack. The backpack is the outer function. The folder is the inner function. I can open up either one that's executing it. I can also put something into the folder. But when I put this in the folder, I'm also putting it in the backpack. Really, I'm putting it in the backpack first, and then I just keep on going down into the folder. And then, even though I technically put this in the backpack first, put it in the folder. God, I shouldn't have picked the folder with so much shit in it already. It's an example with dirty data. There we go. All right. So I put the piece of paper in the backpack. Now I'm going to empty the backpack. So I execute this outer function. The thing it gives me back is the folder. I still have this piece of paper available inside the folder. The backpack's gone. I put this paper in the backpack. No backpack anymore. And when I run this uh, folder by opening it up or whatever, I still have access to this piece of paper that I put in the backpack. So I've, I've had a little bit of exposure to this idea over the, the program so far. Um, I'm having a hard time of understanding, like, what's the cue? Like, like, like what situation, when you're in a type of situation, like, like, what's the cue to be like, oh, hey, this might be a good time to use this? Um, a really good use case is exactly what we're doing here. I need to... Uh, map over something. I want to use a standalone function like this, but I need to give it more data than just that function. This is how we would get more data into that. And then in, in theory, you could infinitely nest it like rushing, uh, Russian right. nesting. Exactly. Um, another example of closure. That's also closure. An inner scope referencing an outer scope. This runs top to bottom. When I run FJS, it goes, cool. I'm going to declare this variable. I'm going to declare this function. I'm going to declare this function. I'm going to declare this function. And then I'm going to export this. Done. But this transform. When that gets brought over here, and I actually decide to execute it, it remembers that variable. Even though this file, that got loaded. That's done. It remembers this because it closed over the variable. You've been doing this since like day one of the program, referencing these outer scopes from these inner scopes. Closure is the technical term for that. 
and we can take advantage of how that works by doing things like that. Questions? So, I mean, isn't this kind of what we're doing also uh, on a, uh, like, taking a, a step back or abstracting, I guess, uh, whenever like we do a, a runner file, which executes all of the methods at the mm -hmm. same time? Yep. Oh, cool. Now I've got a word for it. So what's our next step? Uh, next step is probably going to be um, feelings, but <laughs> um, I'll show you some other things. I'll show you like my Easy Bake Oven finished one. So this is the this is a finished answer, and it uses a thing called Lodash. So Lodash is utility functions for JavaScript. Um, things like grouping by property. Well, that's using group by and emit and a, a map. And so like map is a Lodash function, way more powerful than the one that comes with JavaScript. Because among other things, it also works with objects, like uh, mapped it with hashes and Ruby. And it ends up working like that. Since it doesn't uh, live on the array itself, you have to pass the array in. But you give it an array that you want to map over and then a function you want to apply to each element. So there's tons of those. Like these are all the, all the Lodash functions, so many. But it gives you tools like unions, so like set operations, and you can subtract an array from another array. Um, or let's see, do a, a flat map. That, that's in JavaScript now, actually. But if you have something that's going to end up returning an array with arrays inside of it, you can flatten those as part of the mapping process. Um, you can reduce backwards. So from right to left instead of from left to right uh, with an array. Sample, just give me a random one of these. All kinds of like little, uh, uh, shake these up. All kinds of little random utilities like this. Um, what is Lodash exactly? What was that? What is Lodash exactly? Uh, it is a, a library called a utility library. So okay. if I want to use this with a React app or a node app, then I go npm install lodash. And then if I want to use that, you can import it. And now I can also map over objects. Doing a deep clone. And what's cool about this is if you look at my answer, the entire thing is really just kind of made up of combining those uh, very, very small functions in different ways. making more complex behavior out of more simple behavior. That's functional programming. This right here takes in a bunch of function definitions. Like we know that's a function definition because even though it's being invoked, because it's returning another function. It's making that user ID string available here and then returning a function that can see property. 
So we take advantage of how closures work um, and how we can compose, is the technical term, complex behavior from simple behavior to do this whole transformation. And all of this is pure. It doesn't know what the data is. It doesn't care. There's no state to it. You couldn't really pause it at any point. These are statements of fact. They're not steps so much. That's functional programming. And if you'd like to see me work that entire program functionally, well, that would take me all right. Whoops. 44 minutes to, uh, to go through, but it's got slides and fucking everything on it. So go to my website, kylecorbley.com. It's the most recent talk I did in August. Um, we talked about all those tools for data transformations. I'm noticing one of the bents I have is to sort of like building myself a bunch of little tools because I, I yeah. just I don't like doing a bunch of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know the way I say it. Like, what's the career tra trajectory on that? Oh, it's just development. Like that's that's such bread and butter work. The, there aren't developer jobs where you don't do a ton of that stuff. Other questions? Cool. Fun hanging out with you guys. I miss you guys. Uh, survey should be coming out soon. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. That was Thanks awesome. Thanks a lot, Kyle.